knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men. <laughs> the shadow knows. Ladies and gentlemen, before we join the shadow, let me ask you this. Do you realize that before Goodrich developed the amazing skid protection of its new Silvertown tire, they tested tread designs by the hundred for two long years, endless testing, checking, and comparing. It was a battle of wits against wet roads, dry roads, and hairpin curves, until finally they developed a tread that will stop you quicker, safer on a wet pavement than you've ever stopped before. And that tread, motorists, is the lifesaver tread, found only on the new Goodrich Silvertown. Its never-ending spiral bars act like a whole battery of windshield wipers. They sweep the water right and left, force it out through the deep drainage grooves, make a dry track for the rubber to grip. Yet remember, even though this new Goodrich Silvertown costs many thousands of dollars to design and build, even though it gives you the famous golden ply blowout protection in the bargain, there is no extra cost. Play safe. Start riding on these life-saving Goodrich Silvertowns before it's too late. The Shadow, Lamont Cranston, a man of wealth, a student of science, and a master of other people's minds, devotes his life to righting wrongs, protecting the innocent, and punishing the guilty. Cranston is known to the underworld as the Shadow. Never seen, only heard, his true identity is known only to his constant friend and aide, Margot Lane. Today's story, The Hospital Murder Theory. But Lamont, what's it all about? Margot, my dear, you're yours not to reason why. Yours, but to make those pretty feet of yours walk fast enough to keep up with me. Yes, but I thought this trip to Egypt was to be a vacation. No more work. No more excitement. <laughs> no more excitement for about two weeks and you'd be having me cut out paper dollars. <laughs> Here we are. Cairo General Hospital. Come on, watch these steps. But will you please tell me what it's all about? Oh, I know. If the doctor Rawling phoned the hotel and asked me to go here as fast as I could, so here we are. But who is Dr. Rawlin, and, and what's he got to do with you? Doc Rawling is in charge of this place, old friend of the family. Hmm. It'd be quiet even for the hospital, isn't it? I don't like it, Lamont. Wait out here for me, Margot. I'll call you if I want to. All right, Lamont. Oh, Lamont. Lamont Cranston. Hello, Dr. Rawling. Oh, come in. Come in, do. Oh, I'm so glad to see you, my boy. What's it all about, Doctor? Cranston, our families in America are friends. Perhaps you can help me. There's no one else here I can trust. I don't know where to turn. Wait a minute, Doctor. Wait a minute. How can I help you when I don't know what it's all about? Well, Both of you calm down. Tell me the story. Start where you left off when you phoned me this morning. Oh, yes, yes. I'll tell you everything. Cranston, three of my patients have disappeared. What? Yes, three of them in the last three days. Disappeared right out of the hospital. Well, why don't you go to your Cairo police? Oh, no, no. Not the police. The publicity would ruin the reputation of the hospital if this word got around. Cranston, can you help me? No, Doctor. Tell me this. How do you know those patients didn't just walk out? Well, they couldn't. They were bedridden, every one of them. There's no doubt they were kidnapped out of their bed, and the devil only knows why. It is impossible. But it's true, I tell you, true, Cranston, and it's driving me crazy. I, I can't eat, I can't sleep. All I can see is those empty beds. Oh, you're clever, Cranston. Perhaps you can help us. We can trust you, Mr. Kruger and I. We both agreed on that. Mr. Kruger? Who's Kruger? The head of our board of trustees. He and I... Well, we've kept this horrible thing that's been happening from getting into the newspaper. When did the first patient disappear? Three days ago. Then another disappeared and another. Oh. Cranston, you've got to help us stop this terror before someone, before someone important disappears. In other words, the three patients who have disappeared up to date weren't very important, is that it? Oh, no, just natives. Who were they? Well, the first was an Egyptian beggar boy with a broken leg. He had a fracture Never of the... Never mind the diagnosis. Who disappeared next? An old woman from the bazaar. Broken hip. 
I tell you, she couldn't have moved a step without help. The third? Last night, a Sengelese in one of the French boats. What's wrong with him? Fractured shoulder. In other words, had... none of the patients were constitutionally ill. Oh, no, no, they, they had no disease, if that's what you mean. And what have you done to prevent any more such disappearances? You posted guards? Oh, yes, yes, indeed, all over the hospital. But I tell you, Cranston, I'm afraid. Now, I'm not a superstitious man, but I swear to you there's something supernatural about all this, something not of this world. A strange way for a doctor to talk, Rowling. But it must have been something supernatural. They've disappeared, just disappeared. Beard. Three living people. Take it easy, Doctor. Oh, gone, Take I tell you. Easy. Gone into thin air, and I'm responsible, Cranston. I tell you, if another one disappears. <laughs> now, what is this? Uh, yes. Come quickly. Well, what is it? It's happened again, Doctor. Again. The girl in room 11, she has disappeared. Hurry, Doctor, oh, hurry. The girl is gone. The girl gone. Kidnapped. Now, you see for yourself, Cranston. The bed's empty. Now, when this gets out, we're ruined. My 20 years' work here, gone for nothing. Ruin, ruin. Dr. Roy, for heaven's sake, pull yourself together. Can't sell anything with hysteria. Who's the patient in this room? What is the name? Now, you didn't believe me when I told you it was something supernatural. But now you'll have to believe me. You will. It'll get them all, all our patients. They'll all die. Doctor, stop that. They'll close up the hospital and they'll blame me, me. Stop it, I tell you. No one's blaming you yet. Who is this patient? Another native? No, no. That's what makes it so horrible. This patient was a 16-year-old daughter of the French consul. A young girl? Yes. A guard below the window, a guard in front of the door, and yet she's gone. Gone. It's the end of everything, I tell you. It's the end I of everything. Doctor. What's going on here? Mr. Kruger, look. Look, it's happened again. The consul's daughter gone. Oh, impossible. She's gone, I tell you. Gone, gone. Look for yourself. Heaven help us. If you men will take my advice, you'll call in your local police. Eh? Hey? Uh, who are you? Lamont Cranston is the name. Oh, yes, yes, Mr. Truger. It, it's Lamont Cranston, my, my friend from America. Make him help us, Mr. Truger. Make him. Control yourself, Doctor. There may be a very simple explanation for these disappearances. Yes, a very simple, rational explanation that Doctor. We... Yes. Mr. Kruger, hold this window quickly. Well, well, what is it, Cranston? What did you see out of the window? Mr. Kruger just said there may be a simple and harmless explanation for all these disappearances. Uh, yes, yes, Absolutely. Then look out there on the fire escape. Kruger, look. It's the orderly. The orderly we put out there to guard the room. He's dead. He's dead. And we'll all die. We'll all die. Out. Fainting. <sighs> cool. Yes, it's his heart. He's had trouble with it. All this but excitement. He... Yes, yes, he'll be all right. Just needs quiet. Let me help you lift him onto the bed. Oh, thank you. Yes, yeah, just right over here. Thank you very much. I'll ring for an intern. Anything else I can do, Mr. Kruger? Oh, I don't think so. Thank you. Dr. Rawlings must have expert attention immediately. Then perhaps it'll be better if I leave you. Uh, yes, Mr. Cranston. I'll see Dr. Rawlings again when he's recovered. All right, Mr. Cranston. Don't worry about him. He'll be all right. Goodbye, Cranston. I hope so. Goodbye, Mr. Kruger. Goodbye. Oh, Margot. Yes, Lamont. Four people have disappeared. A guard has been murdered with a six-inch knife in his throat. Oh. Margot seems another mystery challenges my attention as the shadow. Slow up, Margot. There's the hospital up ahead. Lamont, are you sure your scheme will work? I know it's a dangerous undertaking. Oh. Especially for you. Yes, but we agreed that there was no other way in which to find out how all these people disappeared from the I know, Margot. The, the shadow has got to be doubly watchful. I have every faith in you, Lamont. I, I hope it isn't misplaced this time. Well, I'm not worried about that. Stop here, Margot. All right, Lamont. Now, remember what I told you. Head straight for that lamppost in the front of the hospital. I know. Cut your wheel so you sideswipe the fender. It will make noise enough to bring the emergency squad out of the place. Yes, but they'll see I'm not hurt right away. Oh, no, they won't. You stop over the steering wheel. I see you cracked your head on the windshield and call it a concussion. Hope you're right. If I'm wrong, then you won't get a free bed tonight and a chance to act as decoy for one of those body snatchers. Well, see you in the hospital. That's where I leave you. Good luck and be careful. You don't know what we're getting into. Thanks, Lamont. I'll be careful. It's the 
the woman. She's dead. Doctor, here comes the doctor. Hey, let me through. Let me through. Let me through. She's now cold. Sure is lucky. Crashing in front of a hospital. Doctor, is she dead? No, I don't think so. Jim, hurry, get a stretcher. Okay, now. We've got to get this girl to the hospital right away. Well, here I am, an inmate of Cairo General Hospital. Your plan sent me work, Lamont. Yes, almost too well. Are you sure you're all right, Margot? I saw you crash the car into the lamppost. I was afraid you'd overdone the accident and hurt yourself. <laughs> it did shake me up a bit, but I'm all right now. Yes. Wind's very strong tonight, isn't it? Oh, it's welcome. Now, this bed's inclined to be warm. The wind from the desert and those body snatchers are quite welcome to come in that window, aren't they? Do you really think someone will come in here after me? Two others were kidnapped out of this room. Oh. Nervous? A little. I guess it's... It's not knowing just... Just what will come through that window. Well, I'm going to leave you now. Must you? Yes, I... Look around outside. Whoever intends to make you the fifth victim will meet... The shadow... wonder what time it is. I wonder if Lamont will come back. It's so dark. It's like being buried alive in a tomb. Buried alive. I wonder what it would be like to wake up in a coffin. No, I, I mustn't think of such things. Why doesn't Lamont come back? I wonder if anything will happen. That Dr. Rowland said it would be something supernatural. It could be. Egypt. They say anything can happen here. I... I heard something. No. No, it's quiet. Quiet as the inside of a tomb. Why do I keep thinking about tombs? Tombs. Egypt. Mummies. They do run together. Oh, the wind's gone. It's so quiet. Too quiet. What if that doctor was right? What if there were something from another world that was... I hear it. Something is coming toward me in the dark. Something coming toward me. What is it? Coming close. Closer. What will it be? Man? A ghost? I've never been afraid. Won't be afraid now. Closer. Closer. Oh, Lamont, where are you? I can't scream. I... Something sweet. My head. It's pressing close to the mouth. No, it's not a, a ghost. Ghost. Don't you chloroform? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, before we continue with the Shadow's exciting adventure, listen to this. Recognize it? That's the sound of a car as a desperate motorist has jammed on the brakes in an emergency. The shadow knows when you have to stop in an emergency, you have to stop fast. That's why I urge you to replace smooth, worn tires with the new Goodrich Safety Silvertown. Because the new Silvertown Lifesaver Tread is so amazingly different that it gives you the quickest stops you've ever had on any road, wet or dry, curved or straight. And here's proof that the new Silvertown is in a class by itself. An exhaustive road test made by the impartial Pittsburgh Testing Laboratory of the regular and premium price tires of America's six largest tire manufacturers, here's what happened. The new Goodrich Silvertown gave greater skid resistance than any other tire tested. And the tires included tires listed at 40% to 70% higher in price. For your sake, for your family's sake, Make it a point to get a demonstration of the amazing Lifesaver Tread in action. 
Discover what it means to be saved by a Silvertown stop. And remember, the new Goodrich Silvertown offers you both Lifesaver Tread skid protection and Golden Ply blowout protection at no extra cost. I must wear them. My work is very dangerous. Who are you? That does not matter. Only my work matters. My work. You will see. You will see. You, whoever you are, come back here. Come back here. No, no. Do not be impatient. I will show you my work. I will show you. An operating table. A black man strapped on. Why? Now you will see. Yes, now you will see my glory. The Stengel is off the French boat. You stole him from the hospital, too. But why? What are you going to do with him? You will see. <laughs> yes, you I will you? see. <laughs> uh, you hear the black one regains his senses. <laughs> How unfortunate for him. <laughs> oh, those knives... You madman! What are you going to do to him? Black legs, strong black legs. No, you wouldn't. But I will. Look at this. You see this bottle? Liquid in it is green, beautiful green. Listen to it sing. What is it? Listen to it. Yes, yes, my beautiful liquid. Soon I will feed you flesh to grow on flesh. You will not fail me, will you, my beautiful? What is it? What's in that bottle? Yes, yes, I will tell you why not. What harm can you do to me strapped there? You see in this bottle green liquid. I see in it an alchemy of the flesh that will change the world. This, this is the catalyst that grows flesh on flesh. <laughs> and with this I can graft human flesh to human flesh instantaneously. No. It can't be done. And I tell you, it can instantaneously. His flesh to mine, your flesh to mine. Come on. I tell you, I can take his black leg and graft it on in place of yours. Uh. I can take your leg and put it on me. And they won't laugh at me behind my back then. And they won't call me peg leg and limpy. <laughs> yes, I laugh at them. All of them, the whole sneering, snivelling uh, pack of them. Oh, sweet. But. Ah, uh, listen. Uh, the black sailor awakens quickly. I have time only for another word. I put flesh to flesh an amputated leg to a raw, bleeding stump. Then an injection of my beautiful green liquid. Through the bloodstream it races. Flesh cells eagerly join the new flesh cells. In a moment, two moments, three moments. Ah, the miracle is done. Old flesh has joined the new flesh. Lamont, you said you'd be here. To whom do you speak to me? I have no time for words. My work... Lying there, you will see the miracle. <laughs> yes, you will see. No, come back here. Loosen these straps. Lamont, Lamont, where are you? <laughs> Almost completely awake, eh, my black friend? Oh, oh, such a pity. I cannot give you an anesthetic this time. But my beautiful liquid will not work when the patient has been drugged. White man, what do you do, white man? What'd you do? Lamont, Lamont, where uh, are you? Tonight, 
What you do, Eggman? <laughs> your leg. <laughs> your right leg, a good, strong <laughs> leg. No, 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 mon Dieu. No, my leg, no. No, my leg. Give me Stop. Shadow. Drop that knife, Kruger. Who? <sighs> Who spoke my name? <clears throat> my mask. You ripped it off my face. You are Kruger. You, Kruger. Respectable Mr. Kruger. Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the hospital. I, I, I hear the voice. I see no one. Uh, loosen the straps around you, Margot. Uh, the straps around you, woman. They loosen how? Why? The answer to that is in your own ears, Kruger. That voice again. The voice of a shadow. A shadow which asks one question. Why have you murdered? My right leg never any good. Kruger is my name. But they've all had other names for me behind my back. Limpy, they called me Limpy and Peg Leg. But I'll show them. I'll show them all. My discovery it'll put a strong leg on my body soon, and voices in the air won't stop me. There's more than a voice now. Look straight ahead, Kruger. Eyes. Two eyes glaring at me from midair. See how the light glitters in these eyes. Look deep in them, Kruger. Eyes. I tell you, you want to look in my eyes. In them you see wonders. Wonders you never dreamed about. Look, Kruger. I... I don't see, see what... See, see how the light glitters in those eyes. Look deep in them, Kruger. Deep in them. They burn deep in your eyes, Kruger. Deep, deep. Yes, deep. Deep in your mind. And they take away your will, Kruger. Take away your will. Yes, yes. My will is your will, Kruger. My will, your will. No, 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 I won't. I, I work to do. The work will wait, Kruger. You wanted to wait. All you want to do now is look in my eyes. My will, your will. My will, your will. I, I don't know. I... Sleepy. You get very sleepy. Sleepy. Your hand is sleepy. Hand is Your sleepy. Your hand, it opens. It opens and lets the knife fall to the floor. You hear me, Kruger? Open. Open. Margot, you all right? Yes, I'm all right. But the Negro... Unconscious. Kruger, what have you done with the other people you kidnapped out of the hospital? I used them for my experiments. They are all dead. How oh, horrible. All right, Kruger, you can wake up now. Wake up! Ah! <coughs> What? Not a knife in your hand. You're quite harmless, aren't you, Kruger? Those eyes. They're gone. There's nobody here. I am still here, though you cannot see me. You, you hypnotized me. Yes, and I say again, I wish I could have done it sooner. Yes, but how? Who, who are you? They call me the Shadow. Shadow what? The name of a man who tries to right a few of the world's wrongs. I am not afraid of you. I'll kill you. You won't hypnotize me again. I'll kill you. Stay back. I'll kill you. Oh, no, you won't, you poor fool. You're coming with me. I'm not going to judge you. I'll let a jury of your peers do that. No. No, my work. I've got to go on with my work. Come with me, Kruger. No, 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 let go of me. Hands out of the air, let go. Come quietly, Kruger. No. No, you're struggling, you see. You haven't got a chance against me. No. No, no, let go of me, let go. All right, uh, I'll drag you along. No. All the fiendish murderers. No, 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 let go of me. Oh, my work. I've got to go on with my work. Look out! Ah. The lamp! Ha! Ah. Ah, ah. I made you let go! I made you let go! Margo! Margo, look out! The oil from the lamp! The flame is going to catch it! Run! You'll never get me! Not me! <laughs> Oh, he's dead all right, and all the rest of them. I never saw a hotter fire. There must have been plenty of inflammables in there. All sorts of liquids. Well, what I can't understand is why some of the bodies were all cut up. It's more than I can figure out. But two got out of it alive, Chief. At least they think so. What? Two alive? Out of there? Sure, Chief. Right after the explosion, as some say that a man and a woman run out. Uh, who were they? No one seems to know exactly. 
They couldn't see him clear. But they say the man, he was, he was more like, well, like a shadow. Yes, a shadow. Yes, he's right, Margot. We did get away. Strange. We come halfway across the world for a vacation and then this. A poor, deluded creature who thought he could bring himself happiness through murder. He gave others a horrible death, but he died a far more horrible one. No, Margot, there's never any profit in murder. It always brings its own reward. I wonder... I wonder if Kruger understands that now. You have been listening to a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow Magazine, now on sale at your local newsstand. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs>